Smoking kills, but that doesn't stop more than a billion people of the Earth's population from smoking. In 2021, the global tobacco market was valued at $849 billion, with an expected growth in the coming years. But what is the history of this vice? Where did it all begin? The year is roughly 10,278 BC. A family of early humans settled camp in what is today northwestern Utah. They have walked many miles to get here, probably lured by the promise of big game like mammoths. In this camp they got a fire going, carved up a few ducks and had a nice meal. And after their meal they apparently enjoyed some tobacco. Or so it seems. Recently archaeologists in a site referred to as Wishbone found this hearth from which they packed the sediment and studied it in the lab. Here they submerged the mixture in water with the help of which they separated the organic from the non-organic material. From the material they identified the charred remnants of no less than four tobacco seeds. Radiocarbon dating showed that the entire contents, including the tobacco, were approximately 12,300 years old. The gaps in the story of tobacco are wide and the earliest next record of its use is from the 1st century BC, when the Mayan civilization of Central America used the leaves of the genus Nicotiana plant, aka tobacco, for smoking during sacred and religious ceremonies. The next stage of this journey takes us to Columbus and his arrival in the Americas, by which time the natives had already started using tobacco in pipes, cigars and snuffs. The Eastern North American tribes have historically carried tobacco in pouches for trading as well as for smoking it in so-called pipe ceremonies, which were done as either sacred ceremonies or as a method to seal a treaty or an agreement. The Spanish were the first to bring tobacco to Europe around the year 1528. It was a great success. So great a success that only five years later there were already rich tobacco merchants ready to supply for the increase in demand. In the year 1559, Jean Nicot was a French ambassador in Lisbon, Portugal. Nicot was worried about Francis II, the King of France, and his recurring headaches, and decided to send the king samples of leaves and seeds of tobacco, with instructions to use it through inhaling it as snuff. It was a great success. The king's headaches were reportedly marvelously cured, but he did die a year later. By the year 1570, botanists were referring to tobacco as Nicotian, in honor of the French ambassador Jean Nicot, a name that we still use today. Tobacco had reached England by 1573. It gained popularity instantly, and by the year 1595, a little-known poet by the name Anthony Shute published Tobacco, a discussion on the benefits of tobacco. From Shute's tobacco, we have the first known image of a man smoking. History had been made that day. However, the king, James I, was not pleased. He was angry about tobacco, so angry that he wrote a famous polemic titled A Counterblast to Tobacco in 1604, in which he denounces tobacco use as a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and in the black stinking fume thereof, nearest resembling the horrible Stygian smoke of the pit that is bottomless. Honestly, he wasn't too far from the truth. The introduction of tobacco didn't go through such a rough patch in the Netherlands and in southern Germany. In Italy, a cardinal called Crescenzio introduced smoking of tobacco in about 1610, after seeing it in England. Tobacco was banned in Russia in 1634, however Peter the Great revoked all bans when he became monarch in 1689, granting exclusive rights of import to a trading company called Muscovy Company, which would pay annual tribute to the crown a share of the profit. By the late 16th century, tobacco also arrived in the Ottoman Empire, after which it became there a commonly prescribed medicine for many ailments. Later on, it lost popularity and it was blamed rightfully for dizziness, fatigue, dulling of the senses and for leaving a foul taste in the mouth. Sultan Murad IV had had enough and banned smoking in the Ottoman Empire in the year 1633. But his successor, the aptly named Ibrahim the Mad, revoked the ban. 
From the 17th through the 19th century, the American colonies served as a great crop-growing land for Europe's crazy tobacco needs. The high demand in Europe raised the price of tobacco, which in turn helped economically develop the American colonies. By the late 19th century, cigarettes were known as coffee nails. But the link between lung cancer and smoking wasn't established until the 20th century. German doctors were the first to make the link, and it led to the first anti-tobacco movement in Germany. A true breakthrough came in 1948, when the British physiologist Richard Dahl published the first major studies that proved that smoking could cause serious health damage. And by the 1980s, nicotine dependence was for the first time included in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. There is a light at the end of this smoking tunnel. Global smoking rates have been declining and almost all countries have programs to help users quit this affliction. We can only hope that the history of tobacco goes up in smoke.